Hi everybody, Alex Knight here, Pioneer Field Agronomist in North Central Ohio. Today we're out in a cornfield and what we're looking for is disease pressure. Do we have any gray leaf spot? Do we have any northern corn leaf blight? Do we have any tar spot? Across the northern part of Ohio, we've already found um, some evidence of these diseases creeping in, um, but wanna see what is out there um, and what are the things we need to consider when we're talking about fungicide application in 2021. So certainly as we're evaluating fields, there are certain fields we wanna prioritize. Those fields with minimum tillage, those that are higher producing, higher yielding fields, we wanna make sure we're protecting that yield potential. Um, and then when we have corn after corn, certainly there's more ability for disease to be present. The other thing I'd be um, neglectful if I didn't mention is that we do have certain hybrids that are gonna have a higher natural tolerance to these diseases than others. So we wanna make sure we're looking at those disease ratings. Certainly we have products that are gonna be rated lower and those are gonna be products that we wanna prioritize as far as scouting and then as far as spraying goes. We're more likely to see diseases in those products first. Things like Northern corn leaf blight can be seen a little earlier in products like 688. On the end of gray leaf spot, products like 0035, 720, 574, or 306, you might notice a little sooner. But we also wanna keep in mind that some of those high yielding products like 806 or 1077, uh, we wanna be sure we're protecting the yield potential that we have with those. So fungicide can certainly pay off to spray there. So one of the questions that we commonly get uh, with fungicide application is what is the timing that makes the most sense? Well, our historical data would show a 7.4 bushel to the acre increase over a non-fungicide application on average across multiple years. Now, that is obviously gonna depend on our environment and the year and what we have going on out in the field there. That being said, on average, we get about a three week window of protection from that fungicide application. Wanna make sure that we're getting that fungicide out there to protect and optimize against those diseases. So coming off of a year with high vomitoxin in our corn crop, people are asking what they can do to decrease those levels in their corn for 2021. Historically, we have some data showing that fungicides like Proline have the ability to decrease vom in corn. Proline is gonna be labeled for the suppression of gibberella ear rot, so the ability then to suppress that disease which causes most of our vomitoxin in our corn crop. That being said, if you are trying to use this as a strategy, you'll wanna make sure that you're doing this at full silk when most of your field is silking um, and when those silks are fresh. So before they have turned brown, once we reach brown silk, we're not gonna get that same activity. We also wanna make sure that we are getting um, good coverage on those silks. Uh, coverage will be key in getting uh, more of that ear mold suppression and less vomitoxin in that corn crop. Thanks for joining us for this Pioneer Agronomy update. Feel free to like or subscribe below or contact your local Pioneer sales rep, territory manager, or agronomist with further questions. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.